For astrophotography, you need a telescope, obviously, a camera, also quite obvious, and a computer. But what kind of computer? The computer you already have, or you have to buy something new? And if you want to buy something new, what? A PC, a Mac, a notebook, a desktop, a tablet? There's so many options. What's the perfect one? We look at that in this video. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So, grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So, when you ask the question, what computer do I need? I have some bad news for you and some good news. The bad news is most likely it's not what computer, but what computers, because you might need more than one. On the other side, this second computer might be one which you already have, and that's the good news. So the issue is that we have two different areas where we need a computer in astrophotography, and they require very different kind of computer power. The first area is the shooting. When you shoot, you need a computer who actually controls your camera, controls your scope, does the guiding, and eventually other gear like a focuser, a dew heater, and so on and so on. And you want to have that all automated so that you don't have to stay the whole night in the freezing cold. On the other side, there's the stacking and the processing of the picture, which you do afterwards in your warm home. So let's start with the shooting. When we talk about the operation and automation of your gear and of your shooting process, we do not really need a lot of computer power. Every computer can do that. So we have actually three options to manage that. And yes, there might be a zillion other exotic options, but I go with the best in class here. Option one is the ASI Air. For the ones who are not familiar with that, it's a mini computer which is produced by ASI, who also does the cameras. It costs around $300 and it does everything for you. It automates the whole process, be it the imaging process, be it the guiding, the plate solving, the control of your dew heaters, and so on. You can even live stack with it. It has a multitude of options. So it is an absolute great little device with some caveats. First of all, it only works with ASI gear. So if you have a camera which is not ASI, you're out of luck. If you have an electronic focuser which is not ASI, you're out of luck too. Same with the filter wheel. And when it comes to the mount, yes, ASI Air supports mounts which are not from ASI because they don't really do a lot of mounts, but not every mount is supported. For example, my CPC 800, forget about it, will not work with ASI Air, unfortunately. So you need to be fully bought in the ASI ecosystem. And if that's the case with you, it's the perfect option. By the way, the ASI Air is controlled by a tablet, be it an iPad, be it a droid. The other option is Nina. Nina is a software which is actually free and it's simply amazing. It does everything practically what the ASI Air does and some things I feel even better. And the big advantage is it connects to about everything. Now again, there is some caveat, which is Nina only is available for Windows. So if you have a Mac, you're out of luck, or at least you have to create a Windows partition on your Mac. Now with Nina, there are two strategies how you can go. On one side, you can simply install it on your notebook. As stated, it has to be Windows or at least a Windows partition. And then you connect the notebook with your telescope. Has the advantage, you do not need any other computer. Has the disadvantage, you cannot control your telescope from the warmth of your home. If you want to check if everything is fine, if you have to manipulate anything, you go out in the freezing air. 
The other option is you buy something like that, a Windows mini computer. Costs you also around 200 to 300 bucks and you can install everything on this little device. You place that on your telescope and you remote control it from any PC or Mac that you have within your home. This is what I'm doing and I absolutely love it. If you want to know how to set up such a mini computer, you find a link in the description below of Chad from Patriot Astro, who actually did recently a wonderful video explaining step by step how to set such a thing up. A last thing I have to mention is obviously when you go out in the dark wilderness, you, you need something to remote control it there. So you practically need a notebook. Your desktop computer at home is of no good use anymore. Now let's now move over to the second area, which is the stacking and the processing of your exposures. Now here it really doesn't matter that much if you go with a Mac or with Windows, what is absolutely crucial is power. The CPU, the GPU, as well as the amount of RAM. And that makes all the difference. But to be clear, it makes all the difference in how fast it stacks. And if you are okay with the stacking being done in a few hours more, you do not need to invest. You just have to be aware that with a slow computer, it might take six, eight, 12 hours to actually complete the stacking. But if you can run it overnight, for example, that doesn't really matter that much. So practically any window or Mac, which you already have, will be sufficient to do the stacking and the processing, which is the speed of the stacking, as well as the speed of the execution of the different processes in the post-processing will be faster when you have a better computer. Now that said, let me still go through the different options. Option one, desktop or notebook. For me, a very clear decision, desktop, each and every time. Why? Because of the screen property. For doing the processing of your pictures, the bigger your screen and the higher quality your screen has, the better. The better you can see the nuances, the better you have place to compare different pictures, to lay it out, to have all your tools. It just makes the processing work so much easier. Second question, Mac or Windows? As stated, both in principle work. The advantages of the Mac, and I just talk now about the new M1, M2 architecture, is that it really combines the power of the CPU and the GPU and also utilizes all the memory together, including the memory that, have, that you have on your SSD. And this is just the optimal combination to achieve high performance for these softwares. If you look at the two leaders with PIX inside, it still runs with Rosetta so not native on an M1 computer. It still runs fine, but from a stacking point of view, it underperforms compared to an Intel chip. When we look at Astro Pixel processor in its new version 2.0, which is still in a late beta phase, it's native on M1. And from that point of view, it's blazing fast. So choosing, if you're on a budget, an M1 Mac Mini is a perfect stacking and processing computer. If you have more money and you can afford a Mac Studio, it will be blazing fast. When we go now to Windows, the big advantage that you have there is that some software is not available on Mac. For example, Deep Sky Stacker, which is free compared to Astro Pixel Processor and Pixinsight, which are quite expensive. So if you already have a Windows PC by actually installing more RAM, and by exchanging the graphics card to a better one, you can actually already make a big difference in the performance for the stacking. So to sum it all up, if you are on a budget and you don't know where to put your money, I would recommend that you ensure that you have a good 
automation solution for your telescope. This can be accomplished with not much money and can make a huge difference in your comfort of the shooting phase. I'm curious, what do you use for controlling your telescope? Please leave it in the comments below. I hope this was useful and if it was, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. See you next time and clear skies.